scarves on those two tonight. Okay. Hello. Hello. You ready? Luis, do we need? We good? Okay. Good morning. I want to thank all of you for joining us today. I'm David Chu, the city attorney of San Francisco. We're here this morning to announce two lawsuits that have been filed to protect the patients of Laguna Honda and to keep this critical institution open. My city attorney's office has filed a case on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco. The Rennie Public Law Group has filed a case on behalf of the patients of Laguna Honda. For over 150 years, Laguna Honda has provided critical skilled nursing and rehabilitation services for our most vulnerable residents. As the last safety net for our seniors, our family members with severe disabilities, those who can't take care of themselves. We are here because the federal government abruptly ordered Laguna Honda's closure, the transfer and discharge of close to 700 patients, and the end of its federal funding by September 13th, a little more than a month away. Our lawsuit describes how the federal government has put Laguna Honda and our city in an impossible situation with the lives of hundreds of patients at stake. While the hospital has had its challenges, our lawsuit describes how our city has bent over backwards trying to address issues and keep Laguna Honda open. But every step of the way, we have been met with resistance, particularly by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. CMS has been rigid in its approach and unwilling to collaborate with our city and Laguna Honda. Our city highlights how the September 13th deadline is completely arbitrary. We proposed a recertification process that would not require simultaneously kicking patients out of the hospital. It was rejected by CMS. We asked for 18 months to ensure patients would be safely transferred and discharged, rejected. We asked to phase transfers so our most vulnerable patients would be transferred last, rejected. For weeks, Laguna Honda staff has called an average of over 1,000 skilled nursing facilities across California and our country, but haven't been able to find eligible beds for our Medicare and Medicaid patients. That didn't change the minds of the CMS bureaucrats. Our lawsuit also highlights how the city's due process rights have been violated. We filed three administrative appeals in February, April, and May. But those appeals won't even be decided before the unreasonable September 13th deadline, rendering the appeals process meaningless, a fake showing of due process. Laguna Honda and our city deserve real process, not a sham. So what are we asking for with this lawsuit? We're asking for the federal government simply to continue funding, at least until the appeals process is complete and all patients can actually be safely relocated, which we know will not be by September 13th. We're asking the federal government to exercise compassion and common sense. If the funding ends and the deadline isn't changed, there just aren't enough places to transfer these patients. In recent weeks, nine former Laguna Honda patients have died after being transferred or discharged. Nine people. We need to protect patients from this rush process and deadline. Hundreds of lives are literally at stake. Let me end with this. Suing the federal government is the last thing any of us wanted to do. But after months of our attempts at engagement, the federal government has left us with no choice but legal action. Our profound hope is that CMS will come to the table will work with us on a plan that protects the remaining 610 patients, preserving an institution that has been the last safety net for so many. For our patients, this hospital has been their last resort. With five and a half weeks to go, this lawsuit is our last resort. We must save Laguna Honda. Thank you. Um, I want to just take a moment and acknowledge the fact that the entire city is united in our ask here. Uh, I want to thank uh, all of our elected officials. I know we have Supervisor Peskin here. I also want to thank Supervisor Mirna Melgar, Supervisor Raphael Mandelman, and others who have been tremendous advocates. Our next speaker, who is the granddaughter of a former Laguna Honda resident, has been an incredible champion for Laguna Honda, needs no introduction. 
Our office is suing on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco. She is the CEO of our city and county, the 45th mayor of San Francisco, Mayor London Breed. Thank you, David. And I want to just start by acknowledging and thanking our city attorney for his work and his efforts in finding a possible solution to deal with this really challenging and complex problem. The fact is, we shouldn't have to be here. We shouldn't have to be here to protect patients. And what's interesting is the arguments that have been used to protect patients have been the arguments to protect patients from the federal government. And in fact, this has been a long, very frustrating process that started last year when the leaders of Laguna Honda self-reported challenges with those who overdosed, who did not die, and the need to develop systems to support this hospital to ensure patient safety. CMS did not come to us, we went to them. We went to them because Laguna Honda, we understand, has very complex challenges, but more importantly, we have systems and laws and regulations that we know we must follow. So we went to them, and there was a discovery that there were things that we needed to change. And in fact, we move forward in making those changes. And later on this year, in fact, earlier this year, we were notified that there were additional things that needed to be changed. But to be clear, we know that Laguna Honda has challenges. We understand the need to make corrective action. And we've already implemented significant amounts of corrective action based on the recommendations of CMS and what we know that we have to do. And we are in the process of making changes that are necessary to get Laguna Honda on the right path. But let's just be clear. Our city attorney just told you nine patients, nine patients have died after being transferred. During the COVID pandemic, we only lost six lives. Six people died from COVID in one of the largest skilled nursing facilities in the country. When we saw on the news people with lower amounts of residents carrying out patients in body bags with a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear, and everyone was concerned about Laguna Honda. And the people who work there, they saved lives. They protected the residents of Laguna Honda. That should count for something that we know what we do in over the 150 year history of this hospital. We have not seen large numbers of lives lost, even though we know that many people have passed away from natural causes at Laguna Honda Hospital. And now, look at where we are. Forced to move patients, to move patients to homeless shelters outside of the county where their families can't visit. We know that this creates trauma. And until the numbers have climbed in terms of the number of deaths, that was the only time that CMS says, hold off, don't move any more patients. But with no definitive date as to whether or not we're going to need to continue. The problem is the uncertainty. We get mixed messages. Lack of clarity, not clear in our written communication. We're being told one thing and then another. This is frustrating. It's scary. We have a lot of questions that both the staff and the patients and their families want us to answer that we can't always answer. The finger is being pointed. We're being blamed. But the fact is, we have to work with CMS. Almost 70% of the funding comes from Medi-Cal and Medicaid. These are patients that don't have the money to pay for their care. And if any of us end up in a situation like some of these patients, we should be so lucky that there is a facility like Laguna Honda that can take care of us. They took care of my grandmother for almost 14 years. She suffered from dementia. We tried to take care of her at home and it was very difficult, like they're their family. When my grandmother passed away, her main nurse showed up to her service and a couple of other people who took care of her. They grieved like our family grieved. They loved and cared for my grandmother. 
That's what's happening at Laguna Honda Hospital. So the technicalities that get introduced, that create the challenges that put us in this situation are really unfortunate. And I don't think we're asking for anything that's unreasonable. We're asking for clarity of a date specific of when CMS anticipates lifting their requirement for us to transfer patients. We're in fact asking them not to ask us to do that, to halt. We understand that there are some patients that need to be transferred and we are working on that, but we cannot turn them out into the streets. That is not an option. That is not caring for the patients. That is not putting them first. And we're also asking to continue funding as we go through this process to bring Laguna Honda up to the appropriate standards that meet the CMS guidelines. So giving us a deadline of September 18th to retrain hundreds of staff for these new guidelines to make adjustments to many of these things that we've not had to make adjustments to before, it is unrealistic. We have been working on this and making the adjustments and we're moving as quickly as we can, but we have to be responsible so that when those changes are made, that they work. That we're not just telling people what to do, but we're actually demonstrating to them what they need to do that's different than what they have always done before. So there's a lot of work that has to go into that. And we're asking to provide clear direction in writing, just clarity about the things that they're asking us to do. This is not unreasonable. And we have been asking for this kind of information and support now for months. Again, I understand we have work to do, but just think about it. Six lives sadly lost to COVID compared to nine lives, nine people who have been recently transferred. This is a problem. We are here to work with our federal partners. We are here to make Laguna Honda what it needs to be because it is needed. We do not want to see this facility closed. We want to give patients and families and the staff there assurances that this facility is gonna be around for another 150 years. This is a matter of life or death. This is a last resort. We did not want to be here, but we are. And we have a lot of work to do. So we ask respectfully to meet the requests that we have in this lawsuit so that we don't have to continue down this path and we can work together to ultimately protect the people that truly are the most vulnerable residents in our city. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, appreciate your leadership as well as the leadership of our public health institutions in San Francisco. I'm very grateful to our next speaker. She is not only the founding partner of Rennie Public Law Group that is filing the companion lawsuit in this matter. She's not just the former city attorney of San Francisco, but while she was city attorney, she sued the tobacco industry, brought back a judgment for over a half a billion dollars, and then championed the use of those funds to rebuild the Laguna Honda uh, that is in our city today. And with that, of course, I'd like to welcome Luis Rennie. Thank you very much, Mayor Breed and City Attorney Chu. Thank you both for your leadership and the health department officials and the attorneys that have been working on this, this matter. I have a long involvement with Laguna Honda going back to the days when I was on the Board of Supervisors like Supervisor Peskin. And then Mayor Diane Feinstein came and said one day, Louise, let's go out and take a look at Laguna Honda. And I was immediately impressed with the mission and care that Laguna Honda provides for the neediest in our city with needs that require good care. That has been true over the years. And I'm here today representing the residents and their families who cannot believe, cannot believe that they are going to be required to be discharged from Laguna Honda 
through no fault of theirs, but under the diabolical plan of CMS, with the help of the State Department of Health, all must go, regardless of their innocence, regardless of their medical needs. For example, one of the plaintiffs in our class action suit is a longtime resident of San Francisco, but suffers from brittle diabetes, which is a very, very difficult form of diabetes. Her treatment requires the use of a machine to measure the insulin that she has and the blood sugar count. And from time to time, when that machine needs to be maintained, she has to go over to San Francisco General to be able to receive that level of care to keep her alive. Where is she going to go? There are not 700 skilled nursing beds for people without special needs. Where is she going to go? Another client and representative of our class has dementia and probably at the end of her life. Seriously, CMS, Department of Health, you're going to send more people out to die than have already? And the worst part about it, transfer trauma resulting in death is medically documented and should be well known to every competent health official. CMS and the State Department of Health had to know that there would be deaths that occur. How much longer are we going to keep this up before more deaths occur? We have today somebody with us who is the mother of a patient at Laguna Honda and can tell his story very well. But if you go to Laguna Honda, as I have on so many occasions, you will see the good care that is received. The workers, the medical staff at Laguna Honda are special. They do the Lord's work. I am very hopeful, as I know Mayor Breed, City Attorney Chu, and all the people involved in this matter today, we welcome CMS and the State Department of Health. Come to your senses. Come to your senses before more people die, before more people are thrust into homeless shelters. Please come to your senses. Thank you, Ms. Rennie. Um, as she just alluded to, we're here because there are hundreds of patients whose lives are at stake. We're here because these patients are our grandparents, our partners, our children. Here to represent one of those patients is Deborah Bauer, who is the mother of Sean. Hi, I'm, I'm really excited to have this opportunity. I've told all my friends I would stand up in the court of the world to speak about how I believe in about Laguna Honda and its care. My son has been there approximately 20 years. He had a brain injury. He does not have a short-term memory. He is diagnosed what they call declines to speak, which means he can speak, but he does not often. He uses the letter Q to express himself and you know, Monster Mom can interpret that cue. He doesn't like to be touched. It's very hard to get him to take a vaccination, medicine, any kind of treatment where his body is touched. And because of his loss of short-term memory, it's really hard for him to build up familiarity and a degree of security anywhere. And he has that at Laguna Honda. I, I feel like the staff there goes out of their way to understand the quirks of all these patients in a unit that houses many patients with dementia and memory issues. And they've all formed a little family that makes way for each other. And when I come in the unit, and I've visited maybe 6,000 times, um, they'll say, Sham's over there, he's in that room. Or they point him out, or the new guy will come up and say, is that your son? And I will say, yes, and, and that guy's really happy that he's figured something out. And the staff 
is so supportive of, of trying to interpret different nationalities, different languages, different codes of behavior, and try and figure it out and make all these patients exist in the same unit together. And I think they're incredibly successful. And because I visit so much, I'm snoopy and observant, and I watch, and I look how they treat other patients other than my son. And if I thought I saw something, I would remark on it, and then I would probably report it. But I haven't seen that. When he needs to go to the dentist, if I'm not in town and cannot make it to the appointment, because I do go to all his appointments on the bus, because I am a bus queen in San Francisco, um, the dental clinic will call me and say, we've got him in the chair. And I'll persuade him to stay in the chair, and then they'll call me back, and then they call me at the end of the appointment with their victory report of how successful they were. And I think it's just amazing. And then they pass that information on to any other dental technician who's going to handle my son. And he's just a sweet, complicated guy who makes odd noises and um, very loud and has strange behavior. But he's an angel and he's gentle and he feels safe at North Mezzanine in Laguna Honda. And I, I commend them at all times on their ability to make all these patients feel safe. My son feels safe there. I don't want that taken away from him. I don't want it taken away from him or any of the other residents that I see and we wave to in the hallways. And during COVID, they made sure all the time that we got connected on the phone or by a FaceTime call. And the, 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 some of the technicians, they were vigilant in making sure that we had that daily connection. And as Mayor Breed was saying, it is a family. And as a mother, for me to say that, I can apply that word family to something other than what I provide myself. It was a big journey for me to get to that place. And now I say, yes, Laguna Honda is a good and safe and proper family for my son. And I, I want them to continue. I want them to make the changes. But I believe in it. And I believe in, you know, you walk down the hallway and then there's drag queens doing theater in a room and sometimes or there's all kinds of things go on there you could not find a wider selection of human life than at Laguna Honda Hospital that are all trying to get along and are brought together and are supported by the staff that's what I've got to say thank you so much for giving me the opportunity I've been itching to get my opinions out Thank you, Deborah, and we are praying for your family and the Laguna Honda family. Our final speaker today uh, represents the hundreds of folks who, as Luis Rennie referenced, do the Lord's work. The reason Laguna Honda has been nationally recognized for its work with Alzheimer's patients, for its work with HIV and AIDS patients, the reason Laguna Honda has received top honors during this COVID time by its colleagues in the public hospital community is because of the workers. And not only do we want to thank the workers, we also appreciate the leadership of the workers. I want to take a moment. I know we are joined today by the executive director of the San Francisco Labor Council, Kim Tavaglioni. And I'd like to invite up our final speaker, Teresa Rutherford, who is the president-elect of SEIU 1021. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chu, and I want to recognize our mayor, and I want to recognize all the other partners, board of supervisors who are here. My name is Teresa Rutherford. I represent SEIU 1021, but I'm also a nurse at Laguna Honda. And just to give, give away a little secret, I did help to take care of the mayor's grandmother. And at the time, if I recall, she wasn't mayor, so we were not giving her special care. We were giving the care that we always give, which is compassion, kindness, and just seeing a patient as our own family. That's how Laguna Honda operates. I just want to also point out that um, recently I got a call from one of our nurses and she was in tears because one of the patients that she takes care of who has dementia and is blind was being considered 
for a transfer. And she was broken. She just could not imagine how that patient was going to survive if she had to leave Laguna Honda. Because part of the dementia process is that you have to be in familiar surroundings. The people have to know you. You have to know them. You have to feel comfortable in order to be able to thrive and have quality of life. That's what Laguna Honda does. It does not just give medicine. It is about the whole person. And so as we look at this situation, I do want to raise the reality that CMS is an oversight body. We understand that they have their job to do, but oversight must come with compassion. Oversight must come with the understanding that healthcare is not just a clinical process. It's a process about people. And the people at Laguna Honda are not widgets. They are human beings, individuals with families, and they must come first. They must come before any oversight. If oversight is going to be effective, it must. It must consider the individuals, the patients whose lives are being impacted by the rules and the decision. What we do know at this point is that the closure plan is not working. The closure plan is causing more harm than good. And as a labor organization, we are advocating for those patients. We are advocating for the community. We know that Laguna Honda is a healthcare facility that is unique. It's the only one of its kind in the United States. It is also a fundamental part of the healthcare resource that we so badly need in this country. And so by no means, by, by no means, can we close an important facility that serves people, that serves the elderly, that serves the most vulnerable in our community. And so I call on CMS to think about this and to apply a different approach. It is not going to be okay to close Laguna Honda and send out these, all of these patients um, wherever, to homeless shelters. We have seen that nine, nine patients have died, and that's not by, you know, that's not by happenstance. That is because of the trauma of having to move, the fear, the, the reality that you don't know where you're going, the reality that you are being moved from your families. I will tell you that I took care of my grandmother a couple of years ago until she was 92 years old. And when I took her to the hospital, all our family members took turn at staying with her because when she did not have her family around, her blood pressure went up. She started failing. But the moment family members were there, showed up, it was like a different person. Having your family Having a secure place, consistent place where you stay is a big part of caring. It's a big part of being able to bounce back from an illness. Laguna Honda has played that part. It is very unique. It provides round-the-clock care for patients. It, it, it does art. It does music. It does all these things that your average long-term care facility does not provide, cannot provide. It does not have the resources or the capability. We must keep Laguna Honda open. It is not a factory. It is not a building. It is a place of people real people with families. These patients are not widgets, and I am calling and urging CMS, take a turn, keep the patients there, keep the building open, and let's keep this hospital going. It is vital to, Lagoon, to, to, the, to the city and county of San Francisco, but it's also fundamental, fundamentally important as we talk about healthcare, as we talk about creating resources for poor people, for people who do not have enough. This pandemic has shown us that the people who are hurt the most when there is, when there is a pandemic, when there is a major healthcare issue, 
our black and brown people, our poor people. So let us not create a harder, make it harder for people to have resources. Let's not, let us not remove these patients who, ha who depend on Laguna Honda and who need this vital service. Let's not remove that option, that opportunity, that resource from them. Because to do that is death. To do that is to conde condemn them to a life of further harm and hardship. Oversight must make things better. It cannot add to the problem. As I see it now, as we see it now, as SEIU see it, sees it now, um, this oversight is an overreach. It is not serving the purpose that it was made to do. It, it is supposed to make things better, not worse. And so I want to close with a reminder to all of us and to CMS. And uh, this is a quote from uh, Mahatma Gandhi. It says, a civilization is measured by how it treats its weakest members. Let's not forget that. And I would reach out to CMS and say, please note this. Oversight ha only has value when it makes things better, when it improves the environment and the circumstances that it is tasked with. This oversight is overreach. Please take a step back. Let's get back to the table. Yes, Laguna Honda has issues, let's address them, but let's not use the patients as, you know, a game. Let's not use them as football. Let's not put them as target practice. They are human beings. They belong at Laguna Honda. They deserve the best care. Let's give the best care. Let's give good oversight. Let's be responsible. Let's do oversight with compassion. So CMS, come back to the table. Let's talk. Let's work together. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa, for those powerful words and reminding us why we're here. Uh, with that, that is the end of our prepared remarks. I uh, want to open it up to any questions. I want to also just note here to help answer any questions, uh, we have the director of our San Francisco Department of Public Health, Dr. Grant Colfax. We also have the CEO of Laguna Honda, uh, Roland Pickens. Uh, I also want to thank uh, a number of deputies in my office, but we have with us also to answer any technical legal questions, Tara Steely and Henry Lifton. And with that, happy to answer any questions. Well, what we are hoping will happen immediately is that CMS will come to the table. We want to have a real conversation uh, about what the next steps are. As we've said, we only have five and a half weeks. Uh, we do have two lawsuits, uh, and we will be considering all options uh, if they don't come to the table and what we need to do to compel that conversation. So uh, the city attorney's office, we are bringing a lawsuit on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco. And specifically, we are asking the federal government, CMS as you've referred to, uh, to continue its funding at least until the end of the administrative appeals process, uh, as well as to the end of when we know patients could be theoretically transferred or discharged safely. And then I'll ask uh, Ms. Rennie if you want to answer on your behalf. Uh, specifically, our team is representing the residents and the families. We are bringing a class action lawsuit on behalf of all the residents and their families. We are insisting that the discharge stop, period, unless there's a valid medical reason or the end of rehabilitative care or people would move out in the normal course of things but we want the discharges stopped, period. We also want the recertification order withdrawn. You know, just for those of you who might remember, a new Laguna Honda was built and opened in 2010 as the first green hospital in California. It's literally brand new. Why? Why would you recertify a brand new hospital? And to add injury to the injustice, in the course of it, 
CMS has made clear that they're going to reduce the number of available skilled nursing beds by about 130. If you take a look, there is already a dearth of skilled nursing beds available in California. We can't afford to lose 130 beds and still take care of the people in need. I know there's a cohort within CMS and the state that have always felt Laguna Honda was too large and said they feel, well, nursing homes should be sort of scattered. Well, first of all, that's not possible in San Francisco. We're seven by seven. Secondly, as has been pointed out, there are amenities at Laguna Honda that are not available at all in other nursing homes. For example, medical staff is on duty every day. And some of the private homes, you're lucky if a doctor passes by once a month. And we have petting zoos, we have a swimming pool, we have art classes, there are all sorts, a hair salon, all sorts of things that others don't have. So frankly, we want to go back to no discharge and no recertification. And I will add this, yes, mention has been made of deficiencies. There are deficiencies in every single skilled nursing center and hospital in California because we're dealing with human beings. But you take a look at the deficiencies that CMS and the State Department of Health have pointed to. They pale in comparison to what we know, what our investigation shows, goes on in other nursing facilities. But yet CMS and the State Department of Health have chosen to throw the book at Laguna Honda. Why? Nobody's figured out why. But our lawsuits are going to get to the bottom of that. And I think that's going to provide some very interesting reading and media attention when we do. Yes. While we wish that our city policymakers could make the decision here, unfortunately, these are decisions that are being driven uh, by governmental actors outside of San Francisco. So this is why we are asking the federal government, specifically the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Studies, to make different decisions than the ones that they have made. They have told us that we need to close the facility by September 13th. They are cutting off our funding. They have told us that we need to transfer and discharge patients. And under the law, under federal law, that is their, uh, they, they could do that if they so choose, but they do not have to. And what we are asking them to do is to use their discretion to make different decisions to save the lives of patients and not to abuse that discretion with arbitrary decisions like the ones that we believe they've made here. The, the transfers, not the exactly, not because of the board. So, uh, so la right, well, so, so for starters, the Board of Supervisors resolution, uh, it reflects the, the united position of San Francisco, but it cannot compel a different decision by the federal government. Um, sorry, there's one other part to the question. Oh, so last week, uh, CMS did say that they would temporarily pause transfers, but, we understand, we have been told that that does not change the September 13th date. So it's a temporary pause. Uh, while we welcomed what we thought was going to be a true pause for us to be able to catch our breath and actually engage in a conversation, what we've been told is September 13th is still the deadline, so it's actually made things potentially even more difficult because we may have to transfer all the patients in a short period of time. This is in part why we filed the lawsuit. Why don't we do one more question? I think I saw, did I see one more hand? 
All right, if not, thank you all. I want to, of course, thank all of our partners who are here today uh, and stay tuned uh, for further developments on this matter. Thank you very much.